I'm Cindy Speaker, and we are honored today to have attorney David Daggett with us. David is an avid cyclist, but he is also an amazing Ironman triathlete. So, David, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Cindy. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, we're going to talk about the new bicycle laws, and they changed to North Carolina December 1st, I believe. Uh, some of them changed October 1st, and some changed December 1st, but they're all new for 2017. Okay. Now you wrote a blog post recently and you talked about them imposing both rights and responsibilities on the rider. What are some of those rights? Well, the rights that the, the riders have have changed. Uh, North Carolina for years had had what's called the two foot rule, which means when a motor vehicle's on the road and it passes a cyclist, they had to give two feet of passing room. Now, more than half of the states in the United States have a three-foot rule. Cindy, you're from Pennsylvania. Right. Pennsylvania has a four-foot rule. We had a two-foot rule. Well, what the biggest change in the law, I think, is that in a no-passing zone, which are most of our urban roadways and narrow country roadways, there is now a four foot law in North Carolina. So cars have to give you four feet, not two feet, four feet. Okay, okay. So when passing, which is a major, major safety improvement for cyclists right. in North Carolina. So they have to give four feet or be fully in the other lane. Uh, they have to give way if you're turning left. Um, so it, it puts those responsibilities on motorists, gives more rights to cyclists. The one thing I'm always cautious of when I'm talking to cyclists is remember, motorists don't know these new laws. Right. Okay. Just because we know them, we can't get indignant with motorists. We just have to help educate, be yes. good ambassadors for the ongoing safety of cyclists. So yes. I think that's the biggest new right that, that cyclists have is the four foot rule. Okay. Remember, uh, on the average in North Carolina, we have, uh, I, I think it's a neighborhood of 30 cyclists killed every year on the roads and more than 700 injured. Wow. The vast majority of the injuries happen on in the urban areas where the four foot rules now mostly in effect. And most of the deaths occur more in the rural areas. Uh, okay. the rural, and, and that's because you're on higher speed roads, uh, roads that don't have improvements such as bicycle lanes and uh, other traffic awareness devices. Does okay. that make sense? That makes it sense? It does make sense. Yeah. Okay. So that's a great change. So, so uh, there's that. I, I, another, which I, I will call right uh, for cyclists, is historically you had to give hand signals with your left hand. So, you turn left, it's this. You turn right, it's this. And to stop, it's putting your arm down. I don't know if you can see that, but it's putting your yeah. arm down. So but the, where those uh, rules originated is back in the days when cars didn't have turn signals. And obviously you had to do this because yeah. you, can't, you couldn't stick your arm out the right window. Okay, so okay. sort of old laws. The new law that went into effect now codifies that bicyclists can use either arm to give directions. It's fairly intuitive anyway, but you, you can now do it. Yeah. But the one thing I do remind people uh, is cyclists need to be aware of what's around them and what's going on. Remember, depending where the car is, they can't see your right arm. So depending okay. on what type of traffic yeah. you're in and that sort of thing, you still may want to do this, but you can also do this. I've been right. known, you know, keep hands on the handlebars, of course, but I've been known to do this, put a hand back down and do this. Okay. So, so to try to eliminate confusion with the motorists and try to help motorists who are, who are on the road. Right. So uh, I think those are very significant rights. The other thing that has happened is in North Carolina, we had laws that protected motorcycle riders. So mm -hmm. if you force a motorcycle rider to take an avoidance uh, measure either out of their lane or off the road, 
it was a it's a two hundred and fifty dollar minimum fine. Well, that two hundred and fifty dollar fine now applies for forcing a bicyclist out of the, your lane or off the road. If it causes any damage, it's a five hundred dollar fine. Okay. If it causes more than five thousand dollars worth of damage, which is most cyclists know, bicycles now cost in that range. Yeah. Or there's what's under the law is serious personal injury, which usually means you need medical attention. It's a seven hundred fifty dollar fine. So laws that were put in effect uh, a number of years ago to pr protect motorcyclists, give them extra protection. Those now apply to bicyclists also. So okay, I, excellent. I think those are very, very good laws. Right. And I think what you said, the important thing is for us, and that's what we're trying to do today, is really educate motorists as well as, as the bicyclists. A absolutely. Uh, and, and as bicyclists know, 99% of all motorists want to help us. Right. Uh, and so we need to help them to help us, help educate them, uh, uh, be polite, be good ambassadors mm -hmm. on the road. Uh, I, I think that leads to some of the changes that are responsibilities for right. bicyclists. Um, historically, what we had in North Carolina is when riding at night, you had to have uh, front reflector and rear ref reflector. The rear reflector had to be visible from 250 feet back. But that has now changed. I think it's a good change that you now must have a light, not a reflector, a light visible from 300 feet and or, or you can have reflective clothing or reflective vest that's visible from 300 feet. Okay. When riding in the dark, I actually recommend both. And it's interesting, uh, Cindy, the last couple of years, uh, uh, light technology has increased with LED technology, yeah. and I have relatively inexpensive uh, LED lights. They recharge in a USB port. They're very easy to put on the bike and take off. I actually use those for daytime riding also uh, because anything we can do to protect ourselves and be more safe, uh, the, the, the better. And here's the really interesting thing that I have found out with lights on the bike is when we protect ourselves and look out for ourselves, wear a helmet, have, have good lights, that sort of thing, motorists are much more friendly to us. Okay. Uh, and in fact, I was, I was uh, cycling with a friend who was a former professional uh, cyclist, actually one of the top cyclists in the United States. And uh, we were riding together out in the country and he was talking to me about my lights that I had on and it was a bright sunny day and he said what good do those do on a bright sunny day well just then we had one of those great big four-wheel drive loud pickup trucks come roaring <laughs> up next to us rolls down his passenger window which typically when you're out in the country and that happens you go oh no what's coming right. <laughs> right. And, and, and he says he says uh he says hey thanks for having that light you wouldn't believe how far away I could see you. Oh, how so, about that? So it was helpful to us. Yes, him. yes. If we're, if we're helpful to motorists, yeah, they're going to be more helpful to us. Right. Uh, and and so I'm I'm a big believer in uh, being a good ambassador, uh, being safe, using lights, yes. and and trying to spread the word. It keeps us keeps us all safer. Absolutely. You know, when you talk about this, this is quite an investment for the cyclist, all this equipment and all that you have to do. Yeah, it, um, it is, uh, but on a relative scale, it's not that much. Uh, okay. you know, good lights. I, I, I'm trying to think how um, my, my rear light, I think is visible from a mile away. Okay. And, and uh, you know, I, I think it was like 50 or $60. Okay. Okay. And, and so, you know, is it an investment? Of course it is. Yeah. But 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 the trade off with the safety that it imparts, oh, yeah. I, I don't think it's real expensive. The, the, the other interesting thing is a, is a bicycle accidents tend to occur either when a car is passing and turns short on you because they don't realize how fast okay. you're going. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, 
So, you know, when I'm riding a bike, I could be going 25, 30 miles an hour. The, the cars think you're going 10 miles an hour and they don't do it intentionally, but they, but they, they cut you short. Right. Well, light on the back helps in that situation. The, the other situation that you have is cars coming the other direction and making a turn in front of you. Yeah. So, so I also use a front white strobe light. Okay. Very easy. It, it straps right on the handlebars, no fuss, no muss, charges in the USB port. And, and again, it increases your visibility. Anything cyclists can do to increase their visibility, I, I think is very, very valuable. Let me ask you this, David. You're, you're local to North Carolina, um, Winston-Salem area. Sure. Are there local shops that you can recommend where bicyclists can go and <laughs> the, the shop owners are aware of all these? Uh, yeah, you're, you're going you're gonna to bait me here. Um, <laughs> but Is that I, a difficult question? I don't want to put you in a bad situation. No, no. I am friends, uh, you know, longtime friends, and I'm talking 30 plus years with all the shop owners in uh -huh. town. So uh, well, that's great. Yeah. Let, let, let me let me tick them off quickly. Uh, yeah. Clemens, Clemens bicycle. Uh, and I think they're on the call today. Oh, all right. Okay. Josh, Josh, uh, Travis, and Ed. Uh, they're they're terrific. Uh, I ride a Cervelo bicycle. They're the Cervelo dealer, so obviously deal with them. Help sponsor their race team. Uh, Ken's bicycles. Ken has been a friend of mine for. 35 years. I call Ken the Oracle of bicycling. Um, uh, mock orange bikes, uh, Charles and Charlie, very, very helpful. Um, uh, cycle therapy. Uh, Mike is just uh, terrific. He's a servant on helping uh, make trails nice. And then Paul's uh, bike and fitness. By the way, Paul Sr., I believe, just had his 80. Fifth birthday, so oh, wow. happy, happy birthday, Paul Senior. Yes. Uh, uh, Paul Junior and his brothers now run the store. Paul, uh, Dennis, uh, I'm gonna get in trouble because there's five brothers. Uh, but, <laughs> but, but 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 all the stores in the Winston Salem area do a, a terrific job. I, I also ought to give a shout out to Dale Brown at Cycles Dioro in Greensboro. Uh, back in the early 80s when I had absolutely zero money uh, and I was trying to crack through as a pro triathlete, Dale was one who came and helped me with uh, some bike parts and that sort of thing. So, Fantastic. Uh, so it, the, the nice thing about the bicycle community is there's not animosity between the shops. We're all helpful uh, to each other. And, you know, it's the old adage that... Um, that uh, higher water makes all ships float better. And so uh, spreading the positive word in the bicycle community. And I, you know, I just listed all the players in the area and, you know, probably one's going to yell at me because I got a name wrong or something, but, uh, <laughs> but, but, but they've all been longtime friends and they, they do a great job in our community. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me ask you one more thing, because the other day you introduced me to, now let me see where it is, the Wor World Bicycle Relief. And it, I looked at their website and I was like, this is a great organization. Yeah, yeah, World Bicycle Relief, uh, I just love. The, the purpose of World Bicycle Relief is to provide bicycles to people in parts of the world where a bicycle will change their lives. And, uh, and there's some very interesting stories. A lot of this is coming out of, you know, third world countries, Africa, that sort of thing, where uh, we don't realize or see it day to day, but a bicycle used for transportation can change lives forever. It can give people uh, access to livelihood. And more importantly, it can give access to education. And there's uh, there's a terrific uh, uh, a poem written by a young lady from uh, Zambia, and it's uh, education for all. You'll make me tear up here. But her, yeah. her, po her poem talks about how education is power, and by getting education, you can change the world. And right. education's a great equalizer among people. And she couldn't have gotten an education if she didn't have the bicycle to transport herself to a school that was far away from the little village 
yeah. uh, where she lived. I love I love my T-shirt. I did bicycles, freedom, bicycles and freedom and power and joy. This is a World Bike Relief. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah, which, which I just love. That they also sent me the coolest little thing. It's a it's a little figurine, uh, handmade in Zambia by a by a local just uh, uh, folk artist, I guess. And and what it is is a bicycle, and on the back of it is a cage with chickens in it. So, oh wow! So yeah. this is how that man is using a bicycle for his livelihood. Yeah. And although it may seem simple to us it changes lives. It's huge. Now, yeah. now bring it, you know, I, I used to be, I used to like mathematics, so I like the transitive property. Take that transitive property back to us. Uh, health is in our community. Also, bicycling is a great way, particularly, particularly for aging athletes like me, <laughs> to, 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 stay, to stay healthy. And uh, the, these uh, being safe, being good ambassadors, uh, all part of that. Uh, but, and I was going to mention earlier, and I'm, I'm sorry, in, in 1974, North Carolina was one of the leaders in the United States in having a, a bicycle safety um, act. And it's it doesn't have a whole lot of teeth in it. It's more aspirational than um, than giving you doctrine on bike safety, but it's things such as uh, for parks, when public parks are built, uh, there should always be consideration for bike racks. Well, that's that make it mandatory, but it has suggestions. Mm -hmm. uh, we just had here in town, uh, cyclists will be familiar, Polo Road uh, portion of it just got repaved and there's now bike lanes in it. Now the, oh, wow. the okay. and we're still we're still trying to make progress. The unfortunate part is when the street sweeper comes by, it sweeps <laughs> everything off the road into the bike lane. So, <laughs> we're, so, so we've, we've still got to make some progress. Right. But 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 that that there is forward progress. Uh, these new uh, statutes came out of a work group uh, that the North Carolina legislature assigned, and that work group has. Uh, commercial people, rural people, uh, bicycle shop owner, representative of the uh, state highway patrol. So you got law enforcement, farmers, business people, and bicyclists coming together to try to improve uh, the safety and the conditions That's for great. bicyclists and for motorists. So yeah. it's all positive. Yeah. Let me ask you a quick question. So did you ride this morning? I know sometimes you'll say, oh, yeah, I took a hundred mile bicycle ride this morning. No, no. On the weekdays, I swim early in the morning. I never miss. I did my swim this morning. But uh, if if uh, we can get off of here in time, the sun is out today and it's supposed to be getting cold. So I might head out for a quick bike ride. <laughs> and what's a quick bike ride for you? How many miles? 30 miles. 30, 30. miles. Yeah. <laughs> I got a quick 30, all right. That's good. David, so, if someone if someone wants to reach your office with questions, how can they do that? Well, they can email us. They can do that through our website, uh, daggettschuerlaw.com. Of course, we have a Facebook page, post questions there, and those get to me, and we can answer them. Give us a call at, a, at our phone number. So uh, uh, we, we try to be encouraging and supportive. One thing we just did has nothing to do, well, maybe it does have something to do with cycling, but we just put in an outdoor drinking fountain for runners uh, behind our office. Fantastic. Our office is, yeah, our office is, is frequently used before hours, after hours, and on the weekend is a meeting place for runners to run. We oh, how about that? An outdoor drinking fountain. So uh, I guess you can fill your bicycle water bottles there too. That's pretty cool. And if you need a water bottle, we have water bottles too. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, listen, great talking to you today. Thank you so much. Take care. Okay. Be safe and out there. Okay, so that's it for today. Till we see you next time. Thanks so much. All right, bye-bye.